Hello everyone, my name is Alain Grignon and this is my video submission. I realized that Rob blamed me for this competition, so I thought I'd take a moment to explain why. You see, every week I see items on the street ready for garbage pickup. Things uh, online that people are giving away for free. Things like old washing machines, rubbish, bicycles, rubbish, even kids bikes, rubbish, a hand blender, rubbish, even a hoverboard, all rubbish. But what if we combine these items in new creative ways? Could they be given a second, even practical life? I took all that rubbish, along with Rob's videos for inspiration, added my own creativity, and this is what I came up with. Before I reveal it, however, there's one video of Rob's that really got me thinking. In that video, he stated that the most important factor for any wind generator is the speed at which the stator and rotor cross each other's path. I'd like to present to you the Counterstar wind generator. You'll notice it's very junky looking. <laughs> That's not really on purpose, it's just what it is. It's other people's junk that I put together into this concept. But first I just wanted to explain what this is. So this is a washing machine tub that I got for free. It's basically the fan blades for this vertical wind turbine. It's not attached at the moment because it's heavy enough just to sit there and it's sitting between these. Basically, it's a combination of a wind turbine with some gearing. Uh, and precisely, it's a planetary gear set that I built uh, from scratch. A uh, generator that comes from the hoverboard. I took the wheel from a, an adult bike, which is this silver piece here. I took two wheels from a kid's bike and these two together act as a gear system that connects to the central post. That central post is attached to the stator inside of this generator, which is basically the wheel motor in a hoverboard. As this turns counterclockwise, the post in the middle turns clockwise, but 15 times faster. So that means that for the same amount of wind, I would have 15 times more speed generating inside the generator. That is the idea behind it. I'll tell you right now, it does not work in the wind. The reason being is that I didn't have some of the materials that I needed to make it work properly. I was hoping to find some timing belts from cars to be able to build my gears. I couldn't find any anywhere, so I tried using a timing belt that I bought on Amazon from 3D printers, but they're tiny. So what I did is I kept that little timing belt on the, the inside of this wheel. I took apart the rubber inner tube from the tire that was on this wheel, and I wrapped the rubber around the, each of the kids' wheels, but that created friction, which wasn't enough. It kept slipping, and even now it slips. So to try to create some kind of cog mechanism, I just wrapped some twine around each one. It's very Swiss Family Robinson to do that, I, I realize, and it looks kind of hokey, but it kind of works. The central post, it was too tight uh, I wasn't able to have a uh, piece that was narrow enough. I could put a cog system on the central post. So all I was able to do is glue on another piece of that rubber inner tube on the inside. Even with that, it's enough to show the concept and it will light an LED light. But in order to show you that, it's going to be easier for me to show you if I take the fan blades off. 
So I've taken the fan blades off the top. Basically, the central post has inside it, it's a plastic tube that I attached to the stator post. In the stator post was three wires, which made, makes this a three phase DC uh, generator. So I took those three phases and I attached them. I created a three phase bridge rectifier. I made that three phase bridge rectifier small enough that I could stuff it inside this post. And I attached the two um, DC plus and minus feeds coming out of the three phase bridge rectifier and attached it to two wires that were then soldered onto two copper strips. And those two copper strips were glued on the outside of that plastic post. So with those two strips glued outside, I then took the brushes from the hand blender. Coincidentally, those brushes fit exactly the diameter of the pipe that I used. So I was lucky there. Uh, and I put the two brushes up against each of those two copper strips, one for plus, one for minus. And those brushes have wires attached and those wires come out here. And I'm not sure you can see it, but here. So those two wires, I put some alligator clamps on and I've clamped them both to this small LED to show you that it works. You should be able to see what voltage is coming out of the prototype. Three volts, slowly. Three volts, that's moving slowly. So this should be showing milliamps DC. 200, I saw 200 a minute ago. Yeah, 200, 216. In the end, I'm happy that Rob decided to go with my offer because it forced me to just give it a go. For all you American folks, that's get her done. And I can honestly say that it was a lot harder getting it done in real life than what I had pictured in my mind. Now, though the wind generator didn't work out for this prototype, the counter-rotating stator and rotor did work, hence the title Counterstar. I'd like to finish this by thanking Rob sincerely for giving me the opportunity to learn and share what I've learned. Now, I promise that if I were to win that 3D printer, I'm definitely going to give it a go and try to build a counter star. But this time, hopefully it'll work in the wind. So remember to smash that like button if you think my idea is worth exploring further. And if you haven't subscribed to Rob's channel already, I highly recommend it. He's a good guy and he's definitely worth your time. So thank you, I appreciate you, and I out.